It's time to imagine better health with CHI Health. The number of women who are having breast procedures continues to grow. Some seek augmentation. Others are looking for reductions in relief from back and neck pain. Our guest has performed hundreds of procedures in Omaha. We are happy to welcome CHI Health plastic surgeon Armadip Buller. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to join us. I know you probably don't want to brag too much on yourself, but I feel like in, in this world of yours, experience is so important. Um, as patients, we want somebody who knows well what they're doing. So tell us a bit about your history and training. Well, as you can see, I'm not really from here. Mm -hmm. but I, was, I was born in England. I did my medical school there. I was lucky I did general surgery at Indiana University and then I did my plastic trains at Cleveland Clinic and then mm -hmm. I was recruited to Omaha for the academic uh, division there. Mm -hmm. And I've been at Omaha for now for eight years. Mm -hmm. And performed hundreds of procedures here. Some reductions, um, some lifts. But let's talk in general terms maybe before we get too specific about some of the other cases that you might see through either the trauma center or elsewhere. Yeah, I'm lucky. As an academic surgeon, I get to see the whole spectrum of, of trauma to reconstruction mm -hmm. to cancer defects. You know, we, we have patients with uh, facial deformities after motor vehicle accidents. Mm -hmm. We have patients that have cancer resections done after breast or after body, you know, that have large defects that need to mm -hmm. be reconstructed. Uh, and that's an essential component. It's like bacon a cake, that's kind of the base of the cake. Uh, the cosmetic or the lifts that we do at the end when patients want to make themselves better is really kind of the icing on the cake, and mm -hmm. I like to do everything. Mm -hmm. I've read that you've even performed reconstructive surgeries based on pictures in a driver's license. Yeah, sometimes we get patients with massive facial injuries. You know, they're often intubated or they have tracheostomies. That's like a breathing tube mm -hmm. in the neck. And, you know, we have to sort of rebuild their facial bones up. And the idea is to see, you know, how their cheeks were before. We have CT scans of the face, but we don't really have a good idea what the soft tissue looked like yeah. before. And so we have to rely on old pictures for that. Mm -hmm. And you're able to make them whole again. I mean, I, I imagine it's not just about, it's not just a procedure anymore when, when people feel like, they're themselves after a traumatic event or a diagnosis, whatever the case is. I think, you know, people go through traumatic events. You know, there's the internal part, the post-traumatic stress, and then mm -hmm. our job is to try and decrease the stress by decreasing the external look, to try and make them look as best they did before surgery. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. You know, as long as a patient goes back feeling better, that's part of, you know, being a physician is, is getting both the external and the internal. And I think one of our happy patients mm -hmm. is the most important thing. You know, these injuries are traumatic. They will never forget them. If we can alleviate some of that pain and stress in the future, I think that's part of the job. Mm -hmm. With breast procedures, uh, what are some of the most common uh, cases you see there are some of the most common requests you get from women. I, you know, we get we we perform you know comprehensive breast care. You know, it involves breast cancer reconstruction. You know, and then it goes towards the cosmetic when ladies want augmentation done. You know, kind of the middle of the road is the uh, ladies that want reductions done. These are ladies that often have sort of you know spent years you know b carrying the burden. They've had children. Mm -hmm. They have a larger breast. You know, sometimes they're embarrassed to come to the clinic because they kind of feel, is this really cosmetic? And often they find a lot of relief after the reductions themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're able to do more activities. They're able to get in those dresses they weren't able to get in yes. before. Clothes fit better. Yeah. But then there's the pain story. I've had friends who've talked about the relief and how surprised they were. They didn't realize how much their back and neck were hurting just because of that weight. What do you hear from patients after a reduction? I think a lot of them, it's a nice, you know, it's one of those operations where patients actually have less you know, pain mm -hmm. afterwards. They usually out of the hospital the same day or the next morning. They require very little pain meds and often they're very, very satisfied with everything. Mm -hmm. You know, they're able to do more activities. A lot of them go back and do more of the, you know, physical activities now. They can wear bras that they couldn't fit into before. A lot of them feel more comfortable about them, themselves as well. And mm -hmm. I think that's really important. You mm -hmm. know, when you see your patient come back, you know, they're now sort of, you know, wearing more of the athletic gear. You uh -huh. know, it's kind of different. It's kind of rewarding to see that. Uh-huh. And to see themselves differently. Yeah. Not just in the dressing room, but the way they carry themselves. And that's right. what I've, not just women who've had children, but some of my friends who had reductions when they were in college, um, mm. just because it, it bothered them. They were teased about it. Um, so that's one side of the story. And then the other is a breast lift, which to me has also become 
rather commonplace, even more than implants, for example, where women want to change and that's where they go. Implants, will, you know, if we look at the ASPS, mm -hmm. uh, which is the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, this is in, augmentation is still the number one. Lifts have become the fastest growing. And mm -hmm. we have sort of two populations. We have the ladies that are sort of post-childbirth, postpartum. Those ladies, you know, don't particularly want the augmentation, but they want the breasts to be lifted into a more kind of youthful position, mm -hmm. and give them more confidence. Um, and then we have the other population, these patients that have lost a lot of weight, yeah. and they have they, they want to you know go back and get that sort of more natural appearance and we do a lot of lifts on those sort of patients as well so that you know and they don't have to require an augmentation some do some don't but that's you know a, a kind of a gray zone where they may fall into reduction or they may fall mm -hmm. into a cosmetic procedure but those are, are more and more common now you touched on the recovery for reduction what is it like for a breast lift Breast lifts essentially, you know, they can go home the same day, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the nature. Most ladies go home the same day. Very few stay. If they stay, it's usually because of the anesthetic itself. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I feel like experience matters, yes, with everything, but with this especially. And so we invite you to um, look into Dr. Buller online at chihealth.com slash plastic dash surgery. And then We'll link you back to this as well, but we think about um, CHI as this, right, this health institution, and so maybe the cosmetic stuff you don't think initially, but when it comes back to some of these other things, whether it's trauma or a diagnosis or relieving something like back pain, it all connects back, and it's great to have you, um, not just on our show, but I'll say great to have you in Omaha, bringing your expertise here. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you.